Hello everyone, this is Scott. And I'm Otis. We're at the headquarters here in Chesterfield, Michigan. In today's tech session, we're gonna talk about the installation techniques of Detroit Radiant Reverberate uh, Low Intensity Radiant Tube Heaters. Uh, in this session, we're actually going to show you the installation of one of their smaller models. This will be a 20 foot heater at 75,000 BTUs. Um, these, do, these models can come all the way up to 80 feet long at 200,000 BTUs. So when these heaters ship to the job, they normally come in uh, 10 foot sections, sometimes five foot sections if it's a unique heater. Um, so we'll get into the packaging of this in a second. Um, it's important to note that we're reviewing uh, techniques and, and tips to hang this heater. Um, please make sure you do read the manual in full um, for the proper, the full proper installation of these heaters. Okay, so for starters, um, we already took the liberty. We have the first 10 foot tube hung here. Um, I do want to point out a couple, a couple items here. Um, for starters, we want to make sure that the seams are down. So when you're in, in putting these tubes on, tube after tube, uh, we like to make sure the seams are down. Uh, the reason why is because the most amount of heat stress is actually on the top side of the tube because there's a reflector that goes over this. And so we want to minimize the amount of heat stress that's actually on the seam. Okay, so um, let's go into the actual packaging. So when you're actually um, going to start hanging this heater, let's show you how the boxes look and, and, and what the packages look like. So we have the tubes and reflectors that uh, come in 10 foot long boxes. And uh, so the reflectors are stacked up on each other. And you'll notice here, we only have one tube because we've already actually already installed our first tube. So that's how the tubes and reflectors would be packaged. And then we have the power head. And so the power head comes with its own box. And inside the power head box, you have an accessory kit. We've already opened this up. This is where you're gonna find your manuals, your hangers and your clamps and the gas flex connector and those sorts of things to actually make the uh, complete installation. Okay, so the other item we want to make sure is the clamps. Okay, so as you're installing these tubes, um, I always recommend installing the clamps on the female portion of the tube. One nice feature of the Detroit Radiant heaters is there's a male and a female uh, uh, tube connection system. So that is really, really nice for installation because it's a, it's a stronger joint where the load is not on the clamp, the load is actually placed on the tube. So you'll notice here, um, what I like to always make sure is that my bolts, once I start putting clamps on, is my bolts are always facing the same way. And the same goes for the hanger too. Uh, the latches, you'll notice the latches on the side of the hanger. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you a, a little angle, a BK bracket that we have for this. Once in a while, you'll actually have an installation where the reflectors are mounted at an angle. So you'll actually, instead of the cable going to the to the actual hanger itself, this little BK bracket may be installed and you can have 15, 30 or 45 degree uh, hang, uh, hanger cable mounting points. So make sure that your latches are on the proper side, especially if you're gonna be mounting at an angle. Okay, so starting with the first 10 foot tube, it's very important the first 10 foot tube does have two hangers. Uh, so what you'll find is if you have the two hangers properly placed on the first 10 foot tube, every tube that is installed on the system thereafter, you would only have one hanger, generally speaking. And you do want to make sure you look at this illustration in the manual. It's very important that you get your hanger uh, placing correct. Um, so from your, your mounting chains on your power head, you have about two foot four, and then your very first two set of hangers, you'll see here where it says eight foot 10. And then every hanger thereafter, it'll go nine foot eight. And so every tube thereafter, nine foot eight. Um, we have cases where, let's say somebody's replacing somebody else's model heater and they're spacing maybe eight foot centers on their hanger. Or let's just say the installer wants to match the joist system ahead. So he wants to make it convenient on himself and he'll put the hangers at eight foot spacing. Well, that's not a good idea when you're installing these heaters because what will happen is you have your first hanger here and then let's say you go down eight feet so your next hanger may be you know in this area but then when you go on to your next tube now your hangers every time you add a tube your hangers are more and more out of place and so you do want to make sure that you follow the hanger placement because the 
probably one of the most important aspects of a good heater installation is proper hanger placement. And you'll see why when we get into the reflector installation. So another important thing to note is on the first 10 foot tube, uh, you'll, some tubes on the larger models, let's, let's say it's a 150,000 B2 model. Um, it actually is a special tube, the combustion tube we call it. Um, it's, you can distinguish that a couple ways. Um, it would have an orange sticker or some kind of sticker denoting that it would be the first tube. And another little trip, uh, tr trick here at the factory too, they'll, uh, you'll find that they have blue spray paint in there. Um, that's just a quick way of identifying these tubes. Again, that's only on the 150,000 B2 models and above. Sometimes we'll get a phone call and somebody will have like a 75,000 B2 heater like this, and they're looking for that first special tube, whereas maybe on a smaller model, all the tubes may be the same. So definitely make sure you look for that sticker. And also there's an illustration um, of that in the manual that talks about the combustion chamber. And then also you'll notice that there's an illustration in the manual that talks about where the stainless steel clamp goes, again, only on those larger models. So what happens is we have a stainless steel clamp. I'm gonna let you do a little close up of that. There's a sticker on it that gives you a little caution as to where this clamp goes. You'll notice that this clamp does look different than the rest of the clamps. It's a shinier, it's a stainless steel. And um, I'm gonna show you here in the manual. So where we often see this clamp misinstalled is very often we'll see the installer puts that clamp here improperly that clamp really needs to be the second clamp overall in the system. And the reason why is because your flame might be seven or eight feet long on some of the larger heaters. So the most amount of heat stress is at this very first joint. That's why we uh, use that special clamp to handle the additional heat stress. So important to know. Um, another important uh, tip is to make sure your cables are straight up and down. Okay, so every now and then, We'll see the installer, they'll actually try to place the hangers where they're supposed to, but they might want to cheat, uh, you know, how the hangers, how they attach to the ceiling. So they may try to come in at a, as, at a very gradual angle to try to get to this hanger. That's a bad idea because when this heater is installed, you'll have the, the cables pulling in all the different directions. It can result in um, things wanting to pull apart or the heater becoming unlevel or just a, a, a not a clean installation. So make sure that your hanging cables are straight up and down, especially on your power head. Every now and then we'll see an installer, they'll actually wanna to try to use one cable to go up and then down, and then the power head doesn't wanna sit properly. Make sure you use two independent cables for your power head. Again, to keep everything nice and level. Okay, so we've kind of started putting this heater together already. Um, we're gonna go on to the clamps. Okay, so we're, we have the uh, clamp already slid onto the female end. We put the power head in. By the way, um, as far as our training, we have the first 10 foot tube hung and then we slid the power head in. A lot of installers that are pretty good at installing these, have installed a lot of these heaters, they'll actually put the first 10 foot tube and the power head together on the floor. And they'll lift it all up at once, especially if you have more than one guy and then they'll drop their cables and hook everything up all at once and then, when they, and then away they go on their installation but you want to slide the clamp over, halfway over the seam, and then you want to make sure we have our torpedo level here. We already verified that the tube is level. So once we get the tube level, we'll go ahead and tighten our clamp. So, and we'll just do a kind of a partial, a partial tightening for the sake of this video. Uh, the factory does specify 60 foot pounds of torque, so you'll want to use a torque wrench for the final tightening. And a, a little tip to find out if you've tightened this securely enough is you should actually see a very slight embossment in this clamp if it is tightened down good. So look for that. Okay, so I think now we're actually on to the next tube. Okay, so we have our first tube hung. Again, we have the two hangers. We, we have our center support um, that comes. By the way, center supports um, come with the heaters. Some of the, the uh, deluxe models, they get one center support per 10 foot tube section. What they do is they add rigidity for, to the reflector. We do have some economy models that may only come with one center support. And if that's the case, make sure that that one center support is installed on this first 10 foot tube. Um, that's the most crucial. Okay, so a little trick here is we're gonna move on to our 
second tube installation, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do one little quick trick here, Otis. I'm gonna throw my clamp on the female end here first. So again, my bolts, I'm gonna make sure my bolts are on the same side. I'm gonna make sure my seam, when I slide it on, my seam is down. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this a little bit, Otis, just to get this, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and slide this next 10 foot tube on. And you may notice, we're gonna let this hang here for a second. You may notice here that we don't have our, our uh, hanger cable hooked up yet. One of the nice features of these Detroit Radiant tube heaters, because we have the male-female uh, uh, connection, we can actually slide our next 10 foot on, and then we can go ahead and put the, 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 the hanger on. We can go ahead and throw our, our little torpedo level on, and we can use our hanging cable to adjust this to get to the level. And once we find level, we're happy with everything. Everything's nice and straight. Then we can come back down to our clamp here. And we can go ahead and again, slide our clamp over to the halfway point. Boom, right there. And then we'll go ahead and just do a quick, quick tighten. Now in real life, you're gonna actually take your torque wrench. You're gonna tighten those to the proper 60 foot pounds of torque. And, and then away we go. We go on to the, the next tube. If this were a longer heater, the third, fourth tube, and so on and so on. So the baffles always go in the last tube of the system. And we're just gonna show you a quick couple. I think in reality, this might have uh, four or five pieces of baffle. In our case, we're just gonna show you just uh, the, the two baffles. These will be packed in the burner box with the head and the clamps and everything. They do interlock. There you go. So something that we see commonly or we, uh, we get a phone call on is the installer won't read, read this in the manual and they'll, they'll shove the baffle maybe in the first tube or maybe they'll put one piece of baffle per tube. Um, that's not how it's supposed to be. The baffle always goes into the last um, tube of the system. Now, in some cases, there might be four or five pieces of baffle where as you're pushing them into the tube, yes, the baffles may come all the way down the tube and they may spill in to the tube just upstream of that, but important, they don't go all the way down here by the burner where they actually could impinge on the flame. So we like to make sure the baffle is always installed in the last tube. And okay. The, and the placement is vertical, not horizontal. So make sure that's mounted vertically. Very good point, Otis. So what we recommend is we always like to put the reflectors on last. Um, let's just say it's a large job site and there's all their trades in the building, lifts going up and down. We like to try to preserve the reflectors. So we always recommend hanging the heater in completely and at the end come in and go ahead and we slide the reflectors on. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and throw this center support on here and it kind of approximately goes at the halfway point between hangers. Again, these add rigidity. So Otis will go ahead and start the, we'll start the um, reflector installation. And it's important to get these clips out of the way. It's, and let me get this started here into the pocket. Another important little tip is to make sure that you get it in on these center supports, you get it in the pocket on the center supports before you try it, you slide it into the, the other hanger. And the reason why, let's get this up here, is because if you miss this pocket, if, if you miss the pocket here and you try to bend the reflector afterwards, you'll kink the reflector. Okay, so um, there we go. These nice little spring clips here. So they can be hard on the thumbs, but those are there for a reason. They're anti-rattle clips to help keep the reflector down. And uh, sometimes we'll see installers, they want to cut those off. We recommend obviously keeping those. It does minimize vibration of the heating system. So we'll go down here, put the next spring clip on, and there we go. And then slide our reflector in, and there is a trick to this. So um, this is, this is, I'm gonna go ahead and hold this in here. Now, one, one guy can install these heaters. Uh, we're we're, we're kind of known as a, 
a lot of people regard us as the you know one man installation which is nice because of our switch tubing and just how easy our hanging system works um, there we go we have it in both sides of the center support and now i'm going to go ahead and slide my reflector down so when everything's said and done if it's installed properly your hangers are in the right spots and your reflectors are lining up right you should have a, a four inch overlap here okay so now it's important to refer to the manual I think here on page 20, yeah, 23. So make sure you look at the uh, your, uh, where you need to secure these re reflectors. So let's just say as an example, a 40 foot model. You would secure with, this, with uh, sheet metal screws, you would secure between your first and second reflector, but you, you need to leave an expansion joint, let's say in this case, between the third and or the second and third reflector. And then we again begin securing those uh, between the third and fourth reflector. Make sure you look at this in the manual because securing the reflectors is very important as far as uh, keeping everything intact, especially if it's a windy application or what have you. Um, we don't want the reflectors to, to blow off, especially if the hangers are in the wrong spots. Okay, so the hangers should be in the right spots, the reflectors should be secured in the proper spots, and the, what it is, it's just a nice, um, long-lasting, proper, clean-looking installation, and safe, of course. Okay, so a couple other tips that we might want to touch on before we conclude uh, the session is, one is the, the end cap placement. Okay, so when you're done with your reflectors, um, you'll notice this end cap has a shiny side and a mill finish side. Often I'll see the end cap placed like this, which is not the proper way. It really needs to be placed in like the inverted manner here. And there is a bag of clips that come with these. That, yeah, so you can actually put those on. There's four clips that come. I actually recommend if you have some sheet metal screws, I rec recommend using some self-tapper self sheet metal screws, and that way you know that they're just gonna stay on. They're, if it's a really windy or you know, there's a lot of movement, um, they're just not gonna fall off. So that's um, the end caps. And then we're gonna get on to the flex gas connector. Okay, this is becoming more and more of a code official thing where they're looking for this, is you want, and you want to make sure that the flex gas line is installed in a, uh, what they call a C shape. Okay, in the old days, guys used to come in at a 90 degree or from whatever angle, um, but uh, over the years they learned that they want to minimize the stress on the flex connector. So it's a C shape, there's a, there's a, there's a certain radius um, this is an illustration in the manual, but it's also an illustration that is it's required. It's, on the, it's also on the lid of the heater here. They show an illustration of the proper um, flexible gas connection. So make sure that you do that. Okay, so that's one extra uh, important tip that we're going to get on. Um, another is clearance to combustibles. Okay, so all manufacturers are, are required to publish clearance to combustibles, which you would generally find on the lid of the heater, but also in the manuals as well. So let's just say the installer, you're going to put this heater between an aisle, there's shelving systems and cardboard or wood. Um, you need to make sure that you abide to the side clearances and the bottom clearances. Anything that's a combustible material uh, that you, you wanna make sure you're, you're uh, clear on your clearances. And um, Otis made a good point earlier. Um, sometimes if we use those uh, BK brackets when the reflectors are mounted at an angle, the clearance uh, combustibles do change. Now you have a behind and you have a front. So you definitely wanna make sure you look at the manual or you look at the uh, sticker on the lid of the heater. Proper mounting heights is another big one. Every, every now and then we'll get a phone call. Somebody will say, hey, we have, you know, it's really, really hot at one end of the heater and it's really cool at the other. So uh, what we find is that might be like a 60 foot long heater that's mounted 12 feet off the floor. Okay, so the shorter the heater, normally the lower they're mounted. Um, this 20 foot model here that we're talking about today, generally we'd see that be between 11 and 16 feet. But when we get into the longer heaters, the 60, 70, 80 foot models, uh, those would be mounted higher. And so the reason is, is you just need a time to let the energy average out at the floor so it's somewhat even by the time it gets to the floor. 
Uh, we get into the venting of these heaters, you're definitely going to want to look at the illustrations in the manual for your sidewall or your roof venting. Normally at the end of our heater we come off the heater with single wall pipe, make sure it's, all the joints are sealed. And then at your penetration you switch over to a B-vent style vent system to actually get through your penetration. Um, if we are common venting two heaters for, for to save, let's say, penetrations, um, we would go from a four to a four to a six. If we're using our commercial industrial model heaters, four to four to six, we have a residential line that does go three and three and four. But uh, so this is a Y assembly and you would, you would go to your six inch pipe. But do make sure if you are common venting your heaters that they are on the same thermostat. You, they have to be either running at the same time or off at the same time if they're common vented. Um, Otis, is there anything else that, any other little tips or tricks that we can think of here? I think you've hit pretty much everything we got to do, Scott. Yeah. So if you have any questions during the installation process, feel free to call us at the number listed. I think we covered uh, the vast majority of uh, the installation tips. And uh, so this concludes today's tech session and we do thank you for your time. <laughs>